How's it going everyone? My name is Dan, but you can call me Malone. And you might have heard that the US Bureau of Labor Statistics just provided the latest figures for US inflation, and it's worse than expected. Inflation talk has been non-stop for what seems like forever, and rightly so, because it keeps going up. But with all the noise around inflation, it can be hard to get to grips with what's actually going on and the actual impact that inflation has on us as consumers and investors. So in this video, we'll discuss the latest inflation figures, what it all means and why you should care. But before we do, could I ask that you take just two seconds out of your day to inflate the number of likes on this video. And hey, if you're new around here and want to up your personal finance game in a fun and entertaining environment, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. All right. Let's get started. So the US Bureau of Labor Statistics published the Consumer Price Index Summary for January 2022. What does that mean? The Bureau is essentially the fact-finding agency of the US government, and they provide all the juicy economic statistics which make the headlines. One of those statistics is the Consumer Price Index index or CPI for short. The CPI measures the change in prices paid by consumers like you and me for goods and services in the economy. We use the CPI to measure inflation. Inflation data is really important because it gives us an idea of how fast the cost of living is increasing. This is important for bodies like the Federal Reserve and European Central Bank because one of their core objectives is to maintain a long-term average inflation rate of below 2%. They call this price stability. If the data is showing extended periods of inflation in excess of 2%, then the powers that be will intervene by using tools to lower inflation. But more on that later. Essentially, too much inflation is bad, but too little inflation is also bad. So the balance needs to be just right. So back to the latest figures. In December 2021, US inflation hit 7%. This was a big deal because inflation hadn't grown at such a rate for literal decades. You see, once the pandemic arrived in 2020, everybody freaked out. Businesses were closing, worldwide lockdowns of unknown duration took effect, and the markets were collapsing. So the authorities stepped in to make sure that money continued to flow in the economy, because the last thing they wanted was a crash. It became super cheap to borrow money, and the Fed was injecting billions each month into the economy. But our supply chains were severely disrupted by the pandemic. So you have all this money chasing a short supply of goods and services, and this causes what's known as demand pull inflation. Too many dollars chasing too few goods. For months as inflation continued to go higher and higher, the Fed took the stance that this was all transitory. Essentially, they believed there was no need to worry because the inflation was only temporary and all would be well in the future. But as many economists pointed out, the idea of inflation being transitory doesn't really make sense because over a long enough timeline, all inflation is technically transitory. Anyway, December's figures of 7% were cause for concern. The expectation for January's inflation was 7.2%, which will be the highest figure since 1982, four decades ago. Lo and behold, the inflation rate was reported as 7.5% for January, even higher than the expectations. The Bureau reported that increases in the cost of food, electricity, and shelter were the largest contributors to the overall increase. This is, of course, problematic because the average person is now paying more for the goods and services that he or she consumes in their daily life. The price of meats, poultry, fish, and eggs have increased by over 12% in the last year. Electricity, 11%. Gasoline, 40%. Natural gas, 24%. This puts a significant strain on households. Vehicle price inflation is also insane, with the price of used cars and trucks up by over 40% in the last 12 months. Needless to say, the stock market did not like these figures. The Nasdaq was unsurprisingly the worst hit when the figures were announced, and it's important that you understand why. Most of the companies listed on the Nasdaq are are tech companies, many of whom are quote unquote growth stocks. The value of a lot of these companies is heavily reliant on the money that they'll earn from their business in the future. Investors are willing to pay a high price today in the hope that earnings skyrocket in the future, but inflation creates a problem. Here's why. It's the responsibility of the Fed and the European Central Bank to make sure that inflation is kept under control. If they want to reduce inflation in the economy, they will increase interest rates. Increasing interest rates 
rates makes it more expensive to borrow money, which in turn reduces the amount of money which is available for spending. We know that the Fed is going to increase interest rates in March and again at regular intervals throughout the year. The fear is that because inflation is hitting rates which exceed expectations, the Fed might increase the frequency or extent of interest rate hikes. But why does the stock market care about rising interest rates? The answer lies in how stocks are valued. The price of any stock on the stock market represents what the market is willing to pay today in order to be entitled to the cash which the market expects the company to earn in the future. As interest rates rise, the value of those future company cash flows goes down. This results in the price of stocks falling unless the market increases its expectations for future cash flows, which is unlikely in times of inflation. You see, inflation also increases company costs as well. For example, the cost of building products might increase, or the company may pay its employees more money to account for the rising cost of living. Not all companies will be able to pass these costs onto their customers, which will cause their profitability to suffer. There's also the matter of borrowing money. As interest rates increase, it becomes more expensive for companies to borrow money, which they typically use to expand their business. So either they cut down on borrowing and stifle growth, or keep up borrowing and increase the risk of default. All of this is why the stock market, particularly growth stocks, don't like inflation. But what does all of this mean for you? Bottom line, inflation reduces the purchasing power of your cash, meaning that the cash in your bank can buy less goods and services as compared to the same time last year. Now, let there be no mistake, the inflation we're seeing today is nowhere near as problematic as historical instances of hyperinflation, like 1923 Germany, but it's still noticeable. As our cash remains idle in the bank, it's constantly losing money, so we need to invest. We know that inflation over the past 12 months stands at 7.5%. At a minimum, our investments need to generate 7.5% to just protect the value of our cash. If we don't invest, we lock in a 7.5% loss. That's the minimum goal of investing, to protect the value of your initial investment and to earn a return that at least outpaces the rate of inflation. So where does one invest their cash to protect against inflation? Answering that question might seem challenging, especially in the current market conditions. The stock market has performed incredibly well since the crash of March 2020. Investors have rushed to buy stocks hand over fist as the Fed kept interest rates at near zero and drove down bond yields through mass purchasing. But now with the Fed cutting off their bond buying and increasing interest rates, stocks might be in for a rough patch. We've already seen the more speculative investments like the ARK ETFs take big losses since their peaks in early 2021. Then there's real estate. The global real estate market is becoming increasingly increasingly expensive, primarily due to a lack of supply and rising construction costs. This makes it difficult to get onto the property ladder. Plus, as mortgage rates continue to increase, any profits from renting might be squeezed as mortgage payments get larger. This is why we need to take a long-term view on investing. Irrespective as to what happens in the short term, my investing strategy remains unchanged. I invest in low-cost ETFs covering the S&P 500, the European market, and the emerging markets. I know that over 30 30, 40, even 50 years, the value of my cash will be protected from inflation and I'll earn a healthy investment return. That said, there are opportunities to make smart plays. For example, research shows that real estate investment trusts, or REITs for short, outperform the market when inflation is on the rise. Rental income and property prices typically increase alongside inflation, so you could make an educated guess that REITs will do well in the future, provided inflation continues to persist. For those with a bit more appetite for volatility, a non-inflationary token like Bitcoin could be an option. The inability to make an infinite supply of Bitcoin makes it resistant against inflation. This is obviously a stark contrast to fiat currency, which has been printed in its trillions over the past two years. The point is that there's no one-size-fits-all approach to dealing with inflation. But what we do know, in the wise words of the late John C. Bogle, founder of Vanguard, is that invest, you must. To give my closing thoughts, inflation has this self-fulfilling characteristic that can really spiral out of control. If we as consumers are expecting prices to be higher tomorrow as compared to today, we'll buy more today, which will lead to an increase tomorrow. Equally, as businesses are put under pressure to increase the wages of their employees, they pass these increased labor costs onto their customers wherever they can, which drives inflation even further. This is why price stability is a core objective of the powers that be. In 
inflation is standing at levels not seen for 40 years. Households are coming under more and more pressure as the price of everyday items continues to rise. And it's time for the authorities to take action. That action will come in the form of rising interest rates and reduced monetary support. This may spell bad news for our investments in the short term, but really as investors, our priority is the long term. So I really do hope you enjoyed the video here today. As always, if you did enjoy the video, please do let me know in the comment section below. Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.